Okay folks, welcome to Minute Rockets. In this series, we're gonna be designing and building a solid propellant rocket motor from scratch. And I'm gonna show you the design and all the processes that go into it from start to finish. And at the end, we'll fire the motor and see if it works. <laughs> so here's the design of our motor, the basic design. So we're gonna have an aluminum case that's gonna hold everything together. And inside that case, we're gonna have four propellant grains in this case. And the way this rocket motor is designed, you can have different lengths with different numbers of fuel grains in it. And so in this particular motor, we're gonna have four, and those are the red cylinders here. This is a cutaway, of course, of the motor. To retain those and hold the motor closed, there's a forward closure here, and there's a nozzle at the back. Um, of course with a hole in it and that will allow the hot gases to escape as the propellant burns. The nozzle and the forward closure are held in with snap rings. These yellow snap rings here on both ends, those hold everything together. And the motor is sealed with these O-rings um, that are in these grooves here. So the nozzle has a groove and the forward closure has a groove and each one has an O-ring in it that will hold that seal. And to protect the aluminum case from the hot combustion gases, there's this orange uh, thin liner here that goes all the way around all the grains and all the way from the nozzle up to the forward closure. And that will protect and insulate the aluminum case from the hot gases while the propellant burns. So first thing we're going to do is get some size information for our motors. We're going to be modeling these motors after some motors that are available from Loki Research. So we're going to go to LokiResearch.com. And incidentally, so we're going to be machining all of our parts, our case and our nozzle. But a lot of these parts can be purchased, or similar parts can be purchased from LokiResearch.com directly. But for now, we're just going to look here for some size information. So if we go to the Tech Info tab, it tells you the sizes of a lot of their motors. We're going to be doing a 38 millimeter motor and we're going to do one with four grains. So um, this is sort of the motor that we're going to make. So it tells you a lot of the dimensions for that. So it gives us the grain length. Each grain is going to be 2.25 inches long and then the casting tube inner diameter. So this is the diameter of our actual propellant is going to be 1.212 inches. Um, so the 38 millimeter, that's about an inch and a half. That's the outside diameter of the whole motor. Um, so the propellant itself, this is the diameter of it. And the core, which is the size of the hole in the center of the fuel, is going to be one half of an inch. So now we're going to look at simulating our motor so we can characterize it and find out a few things about the motor that we'll need to know. One of the main things we need to know is what size to make our throat. And we, and we also want to characterize this motor and see how much thrust is it going to have, how much power it's going to put out, and that way we can know a little bit about our motor before we go into building it. So one of the great online resources for sugar motors is NACARocketry.net. Richard Naka is a guy that's been doing sugar motors for a long time and he's recorded a lot of data and a lot of information and has some great tools for creating sugar motors. If you go to Richard Naka's page, he's got a great calculator there for this. So if you go down here to Rocketry Software, this SRM, Solid Rocket Motor Design, highly recommended, especially for sugar motors, which is what we're gonna be making here. So right here, we can just download this. It's a zip file, it's really small. Open that up and there's an Excel spreadsheet in here. So here it is. Um, there's some instructions on the front, a lot of great info there. So if we go here to the main data in KN is what we're interested in. This is just the title, so it doesn't matter what you put here. I'm just gonna call it a four grain rocket motor, 38 millimeter. And I'm gonna say utilizing, uh, we're not gonna be using KDNX, we're gonna be using KNSB. So change that. And then we'll just change these numbers to match our motor. So we're gonna be using KNSB. So our chamber diameter inside is gonna be about 31 millimeter. So it's a 38 millimeter motor. And the grain itself is 1.212 inches, which is about 31 millimeters. Um, our length is gonna be equal to 2.25 inches times 25.4 to convert to millimeters. That's one grain times four grains. We're gonna have four grains, um, so it's about 228 millimeters. The outer diameter is gonna be that 31 millimeters again. Uh, the core diameter is gonna, oh, sorry, this should just be 31. The core, remember, is gonna be half an inch, so I can equal 0.5 times 25.4. So that's our core. 
and then our segment length is going to be equal to 2.25 times uh, 25.4 to convert to millimeters. And we're going to have four segments, so that part's correct. Our outer surface is inhibited, that's correct. Our core is exposed, that's correct. Our ends are exposed, that's correct. Uh, our density ratio is going to be, that's, that's fine. Um, and then our target uh, pressure, so this is important. Um, what you choose as your target pressure is going to decide you know, how much pressure is going to be in your case. We have a pretty strong case. It's a pretty thick wall, so 850 PSI is going to be fine. For sugar motors, you can run it all the way down to 500 PSI, maybe even a little lower if you wanted to be real safe. Um, maybe up to 1000 PSI if you wanted to really push it. And then click this to solve, and I usually click it a couple times, make sure it can iterate in. So that solves that page, and then you just go from left to right down here, these three yellow pages. So and then pressure, solve that. And again, I usually click the buttons twice just to be sure that they're settled in. And then performance, solve that one. And then I just go back to the first page and make sure that this number is still zero. If those numbers are zero, that means that your solution is converged. If those numbers are not zero, that means that it didn't find the solution yet. So you can see this will produce an I-class motor and the maximum thrust will be 368 newtons. And if you look over here, it's got pounds. So maximum force of 83 pounds, average force of 74 pounds, and then it'll run for almost a second, 0.98 seconds. Then here's the thrust curve. It's relatively flat. Um, and then if you look under pressure, it gives you the pressure over the burn. So you can see the maximum pressure is right at 850, which is what we chose. And it goes from about 650 up to 850 and then back down to about 750 before it burns out. Um, and then this is the important thing that we need to know right here. Here's our throat diameter, 7.426 millimeters. Um, that's what we'll use in our design. Uh, so it's like 7.43 right in that or right in that range. And so the smaller your throat is, the higher your pressure is going to be and vice versa. A larger throat will lower your pressure because it allows more gas to escape. So we're just going to look at one more thing here and that is this nozzle design tab. So if we go to the nozzle design tab, it'll show us a mock-up of our nozzle, what it'll look like. And on the right hand side is just the notation and the parameters that are important for the nozzle. The really important parameters are the throat diameter, of course, which we've talked about a little bit, um, the entrance angle, and then this exit angle. Um, so if you have your exit angle too steep, then your nozzle will be what's called overexpanded and the flow as it goes out the nozzle will detach and you won't get as much thrust as you could have gotten. The entrance angle is less important. Um, you can choose it more for convenience of the shape of your nozzle and, and sometimes it's good to have a steep angle here just to minimize weight to the throat. It's really the exit angle that's critical. And then the other important parameter is the nozzle exit diameter. So you can see here that the calculator gives you an optimum. Um, so there is an optimum exit diameter as the nozzle diverges, the pressure in the fluid drops. And ideally you want the pressure at the exit of the nozzle to be the same as the pressure outside. Um, if the pressure is lower, then your nozzle is longer than optimal, which adds weight to your rocket and doesn't give you additional thrust. In fact, it takes away a small amount of thrust. And if your nozzle is too short so that the pressure here is higher than the ambient, um, then there's some force that you could have gotten out of your nozzle by making it longer that you didn't get. Um, so there's always an optimal length and that length uh, makes it so the pressure at the exit of the nozzle is the same as, as the ambient. Incidentally, the mock diamonds you see come from overexpanded nozzles. So if you overexpand your nozzle a little bit uh, so that the pressure coming out of here is lower than the ambient, then you get these um, shock reflections that, cr that cause the mock diamonds. Um, so you see that a lot at sea level with rockets because they're designed for it to be efficient at a range of altitudes. And so at sea level, they are overexpanded and you see those mock diamonds. So if you want cool mock diamonds, you might make your nozzle a little bigger. But I'm gonna go with the optimal diameter, which is this about 23.6 millimeters. And the last parameter to look at for our nozzle is this entrance angle here. Just for convenience and to save a little bit of weight, I'm gonna make it 60 degrees. And that'll give us a nice shape that'll uh, work out with the, the way our nozzle is gonna be designed. So. 60 degree entrance angle, 
12 degree exit angle. Our throat diameter is 7.43 millimeters and our exit diameter is going to be 23.66 millimeters. So that is the design of our nozzle. So that's how we get the design of our motor and then the performance characteristics. So this will be an I-Class motor. And so I think that's good for this video. We have the design of our motor down and in on the next video we will start modeling our motor and that way we can build the physical parts. See you next time.